And good afternoon, everybody, or morning, or evening, or wherever you, you might be um, listening or watching this uh, video podcast uh, from SNSN right now. Uh, today, uh, we have a special guest, uh, uh, the director of the Grizzled Senior Center. She's been a friend of the radio station ever since we've started. Um, it's Tina Falk. Good, uh, just so if you can't, if you can't tell with uh, that lovely mask that she's wearing. It's me. It is you. It is me. How can we be sure? Never mind. That <laughs> it is Tina. All right. It is. So Tina, I, I'm going to ask you the, the the very first question that I ask everybody on the uh, these video casts, and uh, I, I I hope uh, uh, I hope you don't take this uh, offensively because it's not meant that way. But um, did Carol Baskin kill her husband? I have no idea. <laughs> so you have not been watching Tiger King, I take it. Ah, uh, no, I have not. Oh. I have not. I do hear it, it's pretty interesting, though. It's a train wreck. I can't stop watching. Yeah. Well, it really is. I may have to uh, tune in. <laughs> do you have Netflix at home? Uh, yes, but I'm not a big TV person. Oh. Have you been, have, like, uh, have you or anybody at home been binge watching anything during the pandemic? Um, I think, because of course the grandchildren are with us, my daughter's with us, and you know, I think my daughter and her husband, yeah, they, I think they've been binging at night. Don't know what they've been binging, but um, yeah. no, I'm, I'm typically, I turn the news on, we turn the weather on, we turn the news on, and that's about it. Yeah. Well, if you get a chance, watch Tiger King. It's It's just... You watch the first episode and be like, "Hey, uh, that's horrible." Second episode is like, "Uh huh." Third one is like, "Oh, this is nuts," and then yeah. you can't stop yeah. watching it. Yeah. All right. So anyway, let's let's get on to some real stuff instead of the fake. Sure. Um, want to talk to you about the the, the senior center and the and the process of it, uh, the new one that's being built up on on Taylor Hill. Yes. And. When is it going to be done? We know it's the, the we see them bringing Phil up there all the time. Um, you know they're obviously working very hard. It's a, there's a heck of a view up there, uh, which I checked out that you know you had told me about. It's uh, a beautiful, yeah. What, yeah. When is this all going to be complete? I think we're probably um, looking toward late fall, early winter. I think um, things have been moving along pretty timely. Uh, we've got a construction crew that's um, very, very good. And uh, I, I think we're, we're pretty satisfied with the way things are going right now. Now, the, but if, the, go ahead. No, I was just going to, if you, if you want to continue, I have another, I have another question to move off of that, but. Sure. No, you go ahead. Next question. Um, how much larger is this senior center going to be compared to the, the one the, that you are in now? Um, about 10,000 feet, 10,000 square feet. Oh, I love, I love lost video picture. on you. Yeah. But we still have audio on you. That's okay. That's as long as we can hear you. That's the, the main thing. Um, now with the larger building are, what kind of services, if any, are going to be expanded? Uh, wh one of the things that, uh, some of the residents have asked about was, uh, like, is the Meals on Wheels program going to get bigger? The Meals on Wheels program will definitely grow. Um, we currently, uh, we're putting out just thousands and thousands of meals a year. It will continue to grow um, simply by virtue of being in the middle of elderly housing complexes. Those people are just simply going to be able, especially McCluggage Manor, they'll be able to walk over for cafe meals. And that would be Monday through Friday. Um, Ashland Manor, especially now that we're closer, we're probably going to be getting more of those residents along with Ledgewood. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you can expect, and this has, um, this has been shown with, senior centers built in the past, you can expect up to a 25% increase in attendance with any new facility that goes up. Okay. 
Um, is, is there going to be, um, is there any plans of putting a cafe in there for the seniors as well? Not a cafe per se, probably nothing more than, than what we have right now, which is we work with TVCCA. They come in, we have what's called an on-site cafe now. That's a TVCCA term. Mm -hmm. And that's, that refers to the people who come in here to eat on a daily basis. Um, which is typically, depending on the activity for that day, we can get anywhere between 20 up to 50 people for the on-site cafe every day. Um, then we also have the outgoing deliveries to the homebound. Gotcha. So it's two separate functions that are going on. Okay. And that right now is all coming out of a kitchen that is less than 400 square feet. Yeah, you guys do a lot out of that that kitchen, that's for sure. Yeah, and that doesn't include membership dinners when the seniors do their membership dinners. And we can put 90 tickets on the block right now, and in three days, they're gone. So, How much, how much larger is the kitchen going to be at the new senior center? Um, I don't have the plans in front of me. It's going to be a lot larger. Um, right now, our kitchen um, is essentially out of code, and it has been for many, many years. We've had to put um, we've had to put some money into it because we didn't have appropriate hand washing stations, and when Uncas Health came on site, um, there were some upgrades that that needed to be done. Um, we've had to replace refrigerators, countertops had to be replaced. So, you know, basically what we're doing right now is just you know consistently putting band aids on everything, you know, just to make it work. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, I'm going to switch gears, uh, you know, it's, and, and talk more about the, the money that's budgeted in, in, in the referendum. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the finance director for the town, uh, had mentioned in, uh, I, it could have been, I, I think it was, it could have been last night's board of finance meeting or, even, or, or before. Um, she had mentioned that uh, 7.8 million uh, was being bonded for the senior center. Is that, is that correct? Um, I think that there was something in there for um, the the bond person. Um, I don't. It's not 7.8. No. What is what is the number? Um, it's either 7.1, 7.2, and I know that there was going to be some fluctuation probably on the lower end with that. So I'm not going to um, 7.5. I. I'll be honest with you, I don't know because we've been playing around with different numbers for different projects. Okay. So, but it, it's not, it's not 7.8. Um, one of the things. And, and let me, let me just say this. Even if it were 7.8, it's one hell of a bargain. Based on when I started talking to um, Willimannick and Wyndham and even Groton and all of those places, it's one hell of a bargain for what we're getting. Well, can you give us an idea what uh, what Willamannick has done and what theirs costs and what, what they're doing? Um, they were well over $10 million. Um, I know Groton, they were, gosh, what, five, six, seven years ago, they were up around $11, $12 million. Um, Yeah, it's, we, uh, we sharpened our pencils. We did extremely well. And what the town is getting is a facility that was planned out 30 to 40 years down the road, much the same way that this particular building was. This building was 19, 1980, it's uh, yeah, 1984. Mm -hmm. And they, what they did is they planned for the future. Well, the future is here. And we've outgrown what their plan was all those years ago. So in designing and planning this, we had to look at growth. We had to look at trends. We had to look at recommendations. So is it larger? Absolutely, it's larger. But the town doesn't want to be doing this 10 years down the road. Okay. And you've gotten almost 40 years out of the current facility. Yeah. And let me tell you, um, we have windows that, that no longer work. We have a totally inadequate Electrical, I mean, we probably have one plug in each office, in each room, one or two sockets. We've got cords everywhere. This building is, we have outgrown this building. 
And I'm pretty darn proud of that because um, we did what we set out to do. And that was to grow the membership here, to grow the services here, to serve the community. And every goal and every long range plan that we set, we've achieved. How has the senior center grown grown uh, in size year over year? Like say How has it? Year this year. Say that again, Mike. Yeah, or let me ask you in a different way. How, what are the services that are completely different and how has the senior center grown? You know, either in membership. Oh, there you are again. Uh, either in membership or in programs, uh, say in the last five years alone. Well, what's happened is you've had a, um, a pretty sharp growth in the baby boomer, baby boomer generation. And we saw that coming. We knew that was going to be coming. So did they require different programming from our 80 years olds, our 90 year olds? Absolutely. They want something a little more vigorous. They want um, more activity. They want something off site. So instead of a simple chair aerobics program, they want a Tai Chi program or they want um, a more strenuous aerobic floor program. They would like to see exercise equipment. Um, we have an art class that is growing. We have a quilting class that is still continuing to grow. I mean, there are times that we have between 15 and 20 people. And as I indicated to you, um, you know, the outlets that are here, when you have 15 quilters coming in on a weekly basis and they're all carrying a sewing machine or some type of equipment, where do you all plug in? Mm -hmm. They're all plugging in. I mean, we, we had a woman fall not too long ago. They're, they've got extension cords going, taping it to the floor. I mean, come on, not acceptable. Well, one of the things I know that in the last five years that I've seen in a senior center myself is uh, 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 the full contact karaoke program. That was pretty aggressive, I thought. <laughs> oh, well, <coughs> don't even suggest it, Mike. I know some of the I know some of the seniors will definitely take they take part in that. There. Oh yeah, yeah, they would. They would. So. Um, go oh, ahead. No, no I, you know. And when we have our line dancing programs, it's ridiculous. Every morning we go in, and I'm sure some of you have heard the story, and many of you haven't, but either Lisa, Joanne, myself, all of us, whoever it may be, every morning we break down the tables. Mm -hmm. Every night we set them back up again. You have a line dancing class come in. You're in there pushing the piano around, and when you're watching the class and they're going across the floor, and you've got stacked chairs and they're dancing around a piano that's pushed up against a wall. It's no way to run a senior center. It's no way. So let's, let's get back into the financing uh, issue yep. uh, at hand. So uh, you're, you're saying the number is more like 7.1, 7.2, right around there, give or take, as far as what the bonding amount is going to be. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that uh, um, the, the finance director mentioned as well is that none of that money is really to include any fixtures or furnishings to go in inside of the senior center. So I guess the question is, is um, where is that money gonna come from? Um, are you gonna bring a lot of the stuff from the current center on over or are there, are there grants that you're searching for to- uh, Well, I'll tell you what, I'm sitting at my desk right now. I like my desk. This desk belonged to the director before me. The chair that I'm sitting in, and I've been here 15 years. The chair I'm sitting in belonged to the director ahead of me. Lisa's got a desk. I don't even know who the heck that belonged to. I like my filing cabinets. I like, we've got perfectly good tables out there in the dining room. There's no reason that we can't take the furniture that we have. And then um, we've had many, many donations. Um, I know that there was a comment made, and I think it was by um, Ms. Ms. Moreau, about it doesn't even include furnishings. Well, I kind of, I have to sit back and chuckle about that, because Mike, you know how I feel about things. Please, if you have a question, 
ask for the appropriate answer instead of throwing stuff out there that you really have no knowledge about what you're talking about. Okay. Now, furnishings. Um, Which I don't. I don't have any idea myself personally. So No, no. so no. I, I'm going to explain it to you and for those who have the question because they do deserve the answer. And I want the, I want the correct answer out there. And I'm going to take this mask off because it's falling off my face. Um, so we are taking almost all of the furnishings that we, we currently have here in the senior center. And I'm good with that. Um, we didn't want the Taj Mahal. We don't expect that we have to have big, new, fancy furniture, chairs, computers, nothing like that. But 10 years ago, um, we started receiving memorial donations from um, members who believed in the senior center and who sadly passed before they could see it come to fruition. And many, many, and, and if you look in the paper sometimes in the obituaries, please make donations in memory of. Well, we've been accumulating a, many, many memorial donations over the past 10 years. And as far as our furnishings and interior, we're going to be just fine. In addition to that, there's the Neighborhood Facilities Act, and we are planning on um, making application to that. So I, I have no worries about the interior of the senior center whatsoever. So what you're saying is that the interior of the senior center and the furnishings really are gonna have no, no effect on the taxpayer at all? Not at all, no, okay. no. All right, very good, very good. And, and, and I, I, I really wish that um, somebody would have asked that question before they put the negativity out there because again, it reflects badly on us. And um, my, you know, I certainly wanted this done and I wanted it done the right way. And that is our plan. And, and that is what I'm saying. It, it's going to be done the right way. Well, this is one of the reasons, like, I, I, I like to have you on uh, the station and talk to you quite frequently because uh, it, it needs to be said that both, both sides of the, uh, the equation have to be presented. Of course, of and, course. And I think sometimes, and not just you, but there are other boards and commissions in town, too, that, that myself will have, you know, uh, uh, certain views on things. But, I'll leave, you know, I'll come and ask you. Some people... They don't. Maybe they're intimidated. I, I don't know. I know. And, and listen, I certainly can appreciate that there are concerns. I can appreciate that people have questions. I respect that. Um, there are certainly things that go on around town that I have questions about, too. But if I don't know specifically enough about something... I'm not going to say anything about it. I'll go to the source and I'll ask. And, and if people do have questions, please just ask. They have a right to know. They, they are taxpayers. Um, they have concerns. They should have concerns. But um, I just would like it done in a civil way. I would appreciate it being done in a civil way. I mean, I, I know for a fact myself, it, you know, I mean, five years ago, five and a half years ago, you didn't know me from Adam. And I walked into your office and started talking. We've had a relationship ever since. And your door has never been locked to any question no. that I've ever had to ask you. You've, uh, no. you've, you've either returned no. calls, returned texts. You've always been, you've, you've always been very forthcoming. Wh whether it's information that I agreed with or didn't agree with, you were always right there. So I, I have to go out and, you know, on, on, on a limb and say, no, you're, you're right. And I, I think, uh, if, you know, you and every other board deserve that. If you have a question, go right to the source. Absolutely. Don't go and that's, grizzle now. Don't go and grizzle no, now. And that's, you know, that's, that's how grownups do things. Um, I will never dodge a question. I will never lie about a question. You may not like what I have to say, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot straight from the hip. And I'm not going to find courage behind a keyboard and put it out there. Talk to me face to face. This is really, or, or call me up, ask me. So here's one of those questions. Yes. Uh, one of those questions, one of the questions that I have here is that is there is is there or is there not a disconnect between say the senior center and youth services bureau, you know, in town as far as programs are concerned. Uh and I guess the the other part of that is it, it is the senior center, the new senior center going to be used 
strictly for senior centered business and that's mm -hmm. it or can other agencies like like the youth center can are, are, is that going to be able to be used as well and, and if not why it's a town building Okay, and I think that those types of scenarios will be addressed as they come. Um, the money right now and the seed money for this, and um, I, I think that we've answered this question, maybe not necessarily to you, but a number of times to the appropriate people. The seed money that Demas gave us for the design of this project was specifically identified for development of a new senior center. We have to adhere to that. Now, what happens after that? You know, in any funding that we're applying for right now, um, it's not just general funding. It is funding for, um, and I lost you again. No, Hold we can on. Still hear you. We can still hear you fine. Okay. Um, it's everything is senior center specific. And that's not, and, and that, and, and I think that people misunderstand that. They think, oh my gosh, you know, they're just specifically making it senior center. We have to work within the guidelines and that's exactly what we're doing. It, it's not meant to offend or insult anybody or exclude anybody. We're building a new senior center and that's what our funding is for. Got it. Um, I had I had one other question here. Oh, okay. The um, the the cost of the senior center once again. Now, uh, is the town looking towards uh, different grants to to go ahead and bring down the cost? You know. Oh, yeah, most most definitely. But you have to understand something, Mike. Um, there is uh, a USDA request um, that, that's been up in Hartford for quite some time now. It's not that they're ignoring it, but um, you know, a lot has been put, not put on hold, well, yeah, set aside. A lot cannot be addressed right now because of everything with the COVID that's going on. Um, you know, so if there are um, bond hearings, uh, a lot of these, these types of um, hearings and meetings are, are being rescheduled or postponed because of what's going on. You know, a lot of people not in the workplace, a lot of people not in offices up in Hartford. So um, we've got to go day to day with what we've got. Is the intention there? Absolutely. We are going to fight until the bitter end to reduce this dollar amount. Um, we still have extremely strong support from Senator Summers. She was um, just here with us yesterday. She is continuously looking. Um, we do have some other, um, yep, we've got Joe Courtney's office, but we've actually had, you know, some people come forward that totally threw me, um, threw me for a loop because there are people out there that I never expected who are absolutely going forward to find additional funding. So I feel good about this. Um, and probably the, the, the last question that, that I have, mm -hmm. um, and this may be even the, the, the toughest one of them all, um, within the community, I have heard some rumblings mm -hmm. from, from different people, and I'm, yep. sure, I'm sure you have as well, uh, yep. that some people felt that they possibly during the referendum were misled a little bit thinking that it was going to be more of a community center and just and not just a senior center. So what, what do you say to those people that have that, uh, that, that uh, question in their mind? Okay. I am going to be very frank with my answer. Okay. Because this has gone on long enough. Many years ago, there was conversation of putting up a facility and it was going to be a combination youth slash senior slash community center. We presented that to the town. It was looked upon favorably, but then it kind of fell through the cracks, okay? It wasn't pursued and we were told that we could not use the school street site. From that point on, the two concepts split 
dramatically and went their separate ways. And then we heard about a youth slash community center somehow going up around the Hill Street area. Then we heard about the um, youth slash community center going in with, I believe it's River Church. Um, then we heard, uh, there have been multiple scenarios on the youth slash community center, okay? I've lost track, quite frankly. I stayed on my track of building a new senior center. Never did the words ever since that time, the joint venture on School Street, never did the words senior center, community center come out of my mouth. So this whole community center thing is just, I stuck to it. I went for the grants. I continued to talk to people. I fought through the mud to build a new senior center. There's no problem with somebody moving forward. If they want it bad enough, they will do the same type of things that we did here at the senior center and make that community center happen. They can do it. Well, that's pretty plain. <laughs> that's, that's pretty straightforward, Tina. Well, I, you know, I, I never did the word community center come out of my mouth for this particular build. Is there anything else you want to add or may, any, anything else that you want to talk about or, or mention that? Uh, no, no, I, I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity, um, you know, to talk with you and, and we and are well with you. Yeah, and I know. And, you know, we, we are continuing to forge ahead. Um, it, it is a big project, but we, as I said, we did this for moving forward. And, um, you know, looking out 30, 40 years, uh, senior population is going to grow um, quite a bit more than it is now. Uh, it, it, there will be more seniors 10, 15 years from now the, than the we have now. The, the seniors, that, that demographic, uh, 62 plus, is the fastest demographic or growing demographic in the United States. Yes, it is. So you have to account for that. You know, when you project and you do strategic planning, these are the things that you have to look at. You can't plan for five years down the road. Um, you've you've got to look way ahead and, and you've got to do your homework. And we did our homework. All right. Well, okay, Elijah, I got one more question, but this will be a, a, a good question. Please tell me, is Mama Betty immortal? <laughs> is she immortal? I don't know. I, I don't know that I can use the word immortal, but I will tell you. Um, she, is one, she is such a strong, strong soul. She really is. Um, she's, she's remarkable. She's tough and she's inspirational and we, we wish her the very, very best. As you know, you know, she is at Colonial. Um, she's had, she's had some issues, but, uh, she's rehabbing a little bit to get some strength back and hopefully she'll be home very, very soon. Yep. Uh, from what I understand, she'll be running the decathlon in uh, the next Olympics. <laughs> um, my plan is that Mama Betty is going to be cutting the ribbon at that. Um, the new center. On the day we open the new senior center. Yeah. She's going to, we're going to hand her the scissors and she's going to cut that ribbon. Well, I really hope that happens. I really, because she deserves it. She sure does. She sure does. So. Anything else you got? No, nah, Tina, thank you so much for your time. You've answered a lot of questions okay. uh, that have been stewing around there in uh, the Grizzle community. And I know, Grizzle. I know, but, but you know that I, <clears throat> you know, I, I don't, I could not even tell you how to get on Griswold now. Lisa just taught me how to do a post on the Griswold Senior Center Facebook page. Um, I, I'm not, I, I'm not about finding courage behind my keyboard. I'm, I'm not going to get into the mud with things. I've got a job to do. I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep taking the high road to get this job done. And I'm going to be damn proud when we're done that we did it the right way. So. All right, Tina. Thank you very much, uh, Senior Center Director Tina Falk. And uh, we look forward to uh, having you on uh, the next time. Absolutely. Just let me know. Take care and be safe. Okay. You too. Thank you, Tina. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.